to make some modifications to the facade. You know, that process may be better done through staff involvement that can then be done through either more community involvement or, or through you know, the commissioners. So, I mean, I, 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 trust, I trust your judgment in terms of how we best serve your community. No, but, but absolutely. Okay, okay, good. That's, that's a good thing. Um, I would note that tonight of our speakers, we had uh, six folks in favor of the, uh, that spoke. We have six folks in favor of it and five folks that are, were against it. Uh, from my discussions in the neighborhood out there, the, there were more people than that for it. Um, I think that's all my question. That's all the question I have. Is it guaranteed we'll get the, the this fresh one versus the the normal ones? Okay. <clears throat> that's all I have, Madam Chair, for now. Um, I'm going to make just a couple quick comments. Um, David, I was going to ask you when the planning board met the last time uh, on this. Did they have a presentation like? we've had tonight with all these speakers as far, not the public comment section, but as far as the people from Terramore and uh, the traffic and the, they... Well, the traffic... We didn't uh, have that. Uh, uh, that was mentioned in, and, and uh, Joe Strickland, who is who I dealt with, and I believe he's at another uh, meeting tonight, uh, he volunteered that. There is a traffic analysis uh, kind of required in the site plan development and that's a DOT provides a lot of that information. So they went above and beyond because uh, most of our areas are considered underutilized for a lot of the secondary roads. We don't necessarily get into a detailed traffic study like that was provided. Uh, but yes, there was a, a presentation from Terrible. Not as not as many people here. Not like with the uh, with the like crime. They probably had more public comment, but uh, yeah. we had less people representing the, the proposal that evening. Right. And well, that, that is somewhat typical of a planning meeting sometimes. Gotcha. Okay. Because I think we have been provided a lot of additional information maybe that the planning board didn't have and mm -hmm. and um, certainly more traffic information, more information about the, the crime impact and, um, and that sort of thing. Um, I think Rick made a good point about um, when this is meets all the criteria that we have set forth in the plan and we were to deny it then that kind of sets us up for uh, how would we approve anything else there um, in the future um, that's even similar even if it was like locally owned because mm -hmm. in my opinion I feel like a lot of what I've heard is that uh, because it is Dollar General it's sort of they're sort of demonized to a degree and I think they're I, I get it um, you know I, I will say they, they do pop up everywhere there's plenty of memes on social media about Dollar General um, but I will say when one was built between my work and my home even though I had one two miles from my work for me to have to go out of my way to that one even though it's just a couple miles and then backtrack to my house, and now that I have one between my work and my house, of course that's the one I, I use and I stop at, and and it's it's very convenient and it, and it's and even though they are demonized because they're a chain and they pop up everywhere, I, I feel like they do fulfill a need, like uh, one of the gentlemen said. So, um, I I just. I do appreciate everybody coming out and expressing their opinion about it because, I mean, it, there's been some good points brought up on both sides of this. And that's all I have. Does anybody else have? Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just going to say, you know, I've heard about like when my dad was young and with mom and pop stores everywhere, and now you don't have that. And I admire any business that, that's willing to, to make that investment because uh, it's always a gamble, and especially in uh, small town areas. Uh, and it's definitely a, a big benefit to uh, the elderly as we've heard before. And um, I think I'd heard one comment um, about helping out the school and instead of helping out the school. Well, this right here don't come out of your tax dollars. It, it, the taxpayers are not paying for this store to be built. And instead it's bringing in sales tax money instead of going to Rockingham, it's staying right here in Stokes. Um, 
you need businesses like it in Slates County. Every business owner pays commercial tax on their property, which is higher than what you're paying at your, at your front yard there. And uh, all that sales tax revenue comes back into your community for your schools and everything else. So uh, I'm not sure where some's got confused on that, and I've actually heard it many times. Um, but as I said before, I, I admire every business owner that tries to come here in Stokes County. We're small enough as it is trying to make it, and uh, I know the struggle. Uh, we have a business ourselves out in a very, very rural area, and uh, it's hard. So uh, I appreciate anybody that does put forth that effort and take that gamble. And as far as some of the Dollar Jones I've been to, uh, like our retired police chief has said, it's not hired and the Dow Jones don't bring the crime and it ain't hired in what the area already has. And uh, I've seen that myself. And uh, that's all I had to say. Appreciate it, Madam Chair. First of all, I'd like to appreciate everybody coming out and speaking, versus your opinion. Uh, I think all of the commissioners here, I think all of our numbers and emails are public to everybody across the county. Uh, and I have to agree with Commissioner Morris. Uh, I got one negative phone call on this. One, one call. The rest of them were pro, were for it. Uh, and David, our plan director, anytime he's ever brought us anything before us, I know his eyes are dotted, his T's is crossed, and everything is in what it's supposed to be to get something approved in our county. Uh, I know we talked about uh, fire exit being blocked, but look, let me explain something to you on that. I'm a fire chief here in this county. If you go into any store and the fire exit is blocked, if you see me, I will go and get the manager and tell them to unblock my door. If it's that big of a safety concern, go get the manager and tell them to unblock your door. And I'll bet you they move it. I'll bet you. But all you got to do is contact our local fire marshal's office. They will take care of that as well. Trust me, they will. I don't want to see anybody in this county get hurt or go in a building and get burnt because the exit door was blocked. So that's a concern that we could take to our fire marshal here in our county. But again, I appreciate everyone coming out. I appreciate your concerns. And uh, that's all I've got to say. All right. Other comments? I just want to say thank you for coming out. We don't have this room full often, and I appreciate all of you coming out and speaking your mind. Thank you. That's all, all right. I have, Madam Chair. All right, so um, that ends our discussion, and now we have a um, request before us, a conditional rezoning request, and I'll ask if there is a motion. Sergeant, yeah. just want to remind you that there is a template of a motion to approve or disapprove the rezoning request based on the 2035 comprehensive land use plan and whether it is or is not a reasonable request <clears throat> we'll make some motions and vote based on that all right madam chair uh -huh. i'll move to make a motion to approve the rezoning request number 22-739 submitted by terra more development to rezone three uh, acres from re residential agriculture to hpz highway business conditional zoning for a retail store the request is consistent with the Stokes 2035 comprehensive plan and is a reasonable request. All right, we have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And yeah, let me get a second. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And you're abstaining. Right. Yeah. Accusing yourself. Okay, motion carries. All right. That takes us to the next item, which is the conditional rezoning request from Josiah Robertson. Because I, I said that I would leave my, my either for the board or for anybody on the public. Thank you. Thank you. 
Which page is it? No. Go ahead. Next item on your agenda is to a uh, uh, request from Josiah Robertson uh, to amend conditional zoning permit 16-220 to add a third triplex apartment located on 7.357 acres, uh, currently zoned uh, residential multifamily conditional zoning. This property was rezoned a few years ago for uh, Mr. Robertson to uh, construct these uh, two triplex uh, units on it uh, in this area. The property is located on the north side of Power Dam Road, approximately tenth of a mile before the intersection with Tilly Road, and is addressed at 1377A Power Dam Road, and also 1377B is the two triplex units. Total acreage is 7.357 acres. Uh, again, it has two uh, three-unit apartment uh, on it currently, it's not located in a flood hazard area. The property is located in Zone X outside the 500-year flood. Uh, it's not in a watershed district. The Stokes County Environmental Health Section has issued an improvements permit for the proposed septic systems. Water will be provided by wells. A construction authorization would just be needed if approved. Uh, school districts, Walnut Cove Elementary, Southeastern Middle, and South Stokes High School. Emergency Services, Walnut Cove Volunteer Fire Department, and EMS on Walnut Cove. Uh, erosion again, if more than one acre is graded at the time of construction, then an erosion control permit would be um, required. Access, the site has an existing approved residential driveway access from NCDOT. The surrounding land use is residential and agricultural and, uh, and are used for residential and agricultural purposes. Uh, for the staff comments, this amendment uh, for the conditional zoning permit 16220 I uh, feel is a good, uh, reasonable request. Uh, there, if they had been able to get the uh, soil evaluated uh, properly for this uh, third triplex, it would have probably been done at the original request. Uh, they were able to come up with this septic uh, approval. Uh, the uh, the proposed development of this unit is uh, located on this 7.357 acre land, which gives a ratio that exceeds a single lot residential subdivision proposal of one unit per acre. I uh, feel like this is a, a great request. We need this type of uh, uh, alternative um, uh, residential uh, quarters in the area, very few apartments, uh, mainly because we're all on septic and well. Uh, so when you can find uh, someone willing to propose this in an area that will accept it, this appears to be a, a, a good good use of the property. The planning board recommended by a vote of seven to zero to uh, approve the uh, rezoning request to amend uh, this uh, zoning permit 16220 to allow the third triplex apartment on this 7.357 acres of, of property. They stated that it was a reasonable request and was consistent with the 2035 plan. Do you have a map of the property of the proposal? Uh, do you have any questions for me? I, don't, I received no negative comments. Well, I actually received no comments on this. Okay. Any, any questions? All right, then I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I motion to approve the rezone request number 22-933, amend permit number 16-220, submitted by Joshua Robertson to amend conditional zoning permit 16-220, currently zoned as RMSCZ to add one triplets apartment unit. The request is consistent with the Stokes 2035 comprehensive plan and is a reasonable request. All right, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. things for our county, I think, so it's all good.
last request tonight is a request submitted by R. Carroll Farms Operations LLC to rezone property from residential agricultural to residential agricultural conditional zone for agritourism, restaurant slash lodging to be operated in conjunction with an equestrian facility uh, and a designated agritourism site. The property is located on the east side of Goinstown Road, State Road 1631, approximately a half a mile north of the intersection of NC Highway 770. Goinstown Road in the Sandy Ridge area. I think you all uh, have some information about this right on the Rockingham County uh, line. Uh, the site owner and applicant are the same, Markel Farms Operation LLC. Uh, the total property size of this particular parcel is 63 and a half acres. Uh, the property is uh, located in zone X, an area determined to be outside the 500 year floodplain, and it is the southeastern corner of the 63 and a half acre tract is in the WS4 watershed, Mayo River watershed. On the map that I gave you, that blue line uh, below it is the watershed area. And that's not water, that's just showing you where that designated area is. And that has uh, a little bit of different <coughs> development requirements. Uh, but for the proposed facility on your site plan, uh, this will have no effect on the development proposal. Uh, after the water approval, the site has been evaluated by soil and environmental consultants and has found areas of suitable soil for the facility. The Timmons Group will design both the water and wastewater systems for all the intended uses. Uh, school district's not applicable. Emergency services, Northeast State Volunteer Fire Department and Station 2 in Lawson. Again, erosion control necessary at the time of construction if more than one acre is graded. Access, the site will be accessed by a private drive off of Goinstown Road uh, in Stokes County and there would be an access point off a local road in Rockingham County. Uh, as you know, uh, Victory Hill Church Road was closed on this particular part, so that will become the private access off of Goinstown Road in Stokes. Uh, <coughs> the surrounding land use consists of residential and agricultural uses. There's a lot of vacant land. Uh, R. Carroll Farms has uh, purchased quite a bit of land in the area on both the Stokes and Rockingham County side, so uh, the facility will be well buffered. Uh, there's scattered residences up Goinstown Road, and uh, you know that that runs into uh, you end up in Rockingham County on Anglin Mill. So, it's been a while since I've been up there; got lost almost. <laughs> <laughs> where I was at. <laughs> Not a lot of reason to run up there. Don't have too many. Hope you don't need your cell service and your GPS yeah. when you're up there. <laughs> that ain't there's no help uh, if you do. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Well, uh, as always, issues to consider. The expansion of agritourism facility restaurant lodging will provide potential employment opportunities, potential sales tax base increase due to use as a restaurant and a lodging facility, provides additional tourism destination, support a business-friendly objective in tourism activities, and community acceptance are all areas that you would look at. Uh, from the staff comments, I just won't go over the, everything on here. I think this is a, an excellent uh, activity. We have done something similar, if everyone remembers, or uh, Daniel Wilson at Luna Trail. Uh, he had a wedding venue and he decided he needed some accommodations because the lack of accommodations in the county, especially for things like weddings. Not, not everybody wants to come in a wedding and a camper. So he provided some uh, uh, a nine room uh, hotel and also a restaurant. To the best of my knowledge, he has been quite successful with this. Even during the pandemic, and he opened during the pandemic, he was able to establish this as a, a facility that people uh, like to use. Uh, it's good for tourism in the county, and it does provide additional tax money to the county. Uh, again, from my standpoint, I feel that is very positive. It is consistent with the Stokes 2035 land use plan and is a reasonable request. Planning Board recommended it by a vote of seven to zero based on those same considerations. Okay. And uh, the applicant is here uh, to answer any questions. All right. Does any board members have any questions about this request? This was the most interesting public information meeting of the three we had tonight. <laughs> yeah. Good information. Very informative. <laughs> 
I don't have any questions. I don't know. And, uh, say through driving through up there, there's a lot of dirt being moved and a lot of activity and um, a lot of uh, jobs that are already been created. And uh, that's a, a great thing. I think we're um, we're seeing progress up there for sure. And uh, it's, it's a good thing to see. And, and I mentioned about the sales services, a little off the topic for the planning board, but we are still working on all of that with um, the internet and the phones. So hopefully we'll have some, the whole side of the county will have better options soon, sooner than later. All right, if there are no questions, I'll entertain Madam Chair, a motion. I'll make a motion to approve rezoning request 22948 submitted by R. Carroll Farms Operation LLC to rezone property from RA Residential Agriculture to RACZ Residential Agriculture Condition Conditional Zone for Agritourism. Restaurant lodging to be operated in conjunction with an equestrian facility at designated agritourism site. The request is consistent with the Stokes 2035 comprehensive plan and is a reasonable request. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting <laughs> <laughs> We're adjourned.